Proverbs 12, verses 1 to 28, Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hadeth reproof is brutish. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that mocketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. The words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The wicked are overthrown, and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. He that is despised, and hath a servant, is better than he that honoureth himself, and lacketh bread. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. The wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. He that speaketh truth sheweth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. The lip of truth shall be established for ever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Heaviness in the heart of man mocketh it stoop, but a good word mocketh it glad. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. The slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. Opening Sentence Proverbs 12 verse 1 Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hadeth reproof is brutish. Finding the theme, making a choice. The overarching theme of the book of Proverbs is about making a choice between two ways. The son who loves God's word will choose the path that leads to righteousness, but the son that hates God's word will choose the path that leads to wickedness. In scripture, the word love is not a feeling but a choice. The word choose can often be substituted for the word love. God's son proves who and what he loves by the choices he makes. God has spoken his word, and the strange woman has contradicted it. After pondering the choice between the two, the son must make a decision in his heart and then yield his body to behave in a way that is consistent with his choice. The word reject can also be substituted for the word hate. Hate is not only a feeling, it is also a choice. Isaiah 53 verse 3, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. John 15 verse 18 If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Romans 9 verse 13 As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. God's choice. Romans chapter 9 explains how God showed mercy by choosing one man above another for a particular service. God chose Jacob to serve him, but he rejected Esau while both were in their mother's womb having not yet done either good or evil. Genesis 25 verse 23, Romans 9 verse 11, Brutish Brutish The biblical definition for the word brutish is foolish, past feeling carnal without understanding, and ignorant like a beast. When the brutish son rejects instruction from God, 
he is choosing a path of ignorance which leads to wickedness. The wise son who chooses to receive God's instruction is choosing the path that will lead to righteousness. Proverbs chapter 12 deals with these contrasting choices and their corresponding rewards. A good man. Proverbs 12 verses 2 to 3 A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. A good man is one who chooses to follow God's instructions instead of walking in his own way. He does not rely on his own goodness, but instead relies on the truth of God to lead him to a good and lasting reward. The wicked man chooses to do works of wickedness, thus losing favor with God. A virtuous woman. Proverbs 12 verse for a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that mocketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. A virtuous woman can be found in scripture four times. Three are in the book of Proverbs 12 colon 4, 31 colon 10, 29. All of the women mentioned in the book of Proverbs represent Israel, either believing or unbelieving. Unbelieving Israel causes shame as a result of not following God's instructions. The virtuous woman represents believing Israel, who has been made perfect by God's wisdom. Proverbs 4 verse 9, She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Thoughts and Words Proverbs 12 verses 5 to 6, The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. The words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. Counsel is the thoughts that reside in a person's heart. Thoughts are the words that have been received into the heart by hearing and believing, whether they are good or evil. The thoughts of a person's heart will be reflected in his walk and by the words that come out of his mouth. Psalm 81 verse 12 So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Proverbs 20 to 5 counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Matthew 12 34 O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh, commended or despised. Being despised is the opposite of being commended. Webster's Dictionary defines commend as worthy of notice and regard, to entrust, favorable notice, and to make acceptable. A wise man speaks, and acts based upon the wisdom that is in his heart, and he is commended for it. The wicked man speaks, and acts based on the perverted wisdom in his heart, and he is despised because of it. Proverbs 12 verses 7 to 8 The wicked are overthrown, and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. Jesus told a parable about a man whose house was overthrown because he despised and rejected the word of God. Matthew 7 verses 26 to 27 And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house and it fell, and great was the fall of it. The word received equals the work accomplished. Proverbs 12 verses 9 to 14 He that is despised, and hath a servant, is better than he that honoreth himself, and lacketh bread. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. The wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. What the son believes will be reflected in his behavior. The son who despises God's instructions will lack bread because he refuses to labor. Proverbs 6 verse 9, 20 verse 4, 21, 25. The righteous son will take care of his oxen because he needs them to work the field. A diligent son chooses to follow the plow. 
The wicked son thinks he is too honorable to labor. He chooses to follow vain persons because he is unwilling to work, and he is looking for a shortcut to quick gain. This passage refers to both physical and spiritual gain. Bread obtained by labor is literal food for the son, but bread is also symbolic of the spiritual treasure of the word of God. Hearing and Speaking Proverbs 12 verses 15 to 23 The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. He that speaketh truth sheweth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. The lip of truth shall be established for ever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. The wise son chooses to listen to his father's counsel, and he knows both when to speak and when to be silent. The words he speaks are true, and they bring healing to those who hear him. His actions delight his father and bring himself joy. The foolish son chooses to reject his father's counsel, and he fails to govern the words that come out of his mouth. He speaks lies that cause harm to those around him, and thus suffers the consequences of his own choices. A diligent man. A diligent man is steady and constant in both his word and his work. He is the opposite of the slothful man. He appreciates the value of the substance that he and others have worked to produce. The good word that dwells in his heart makes him able to do good work that pleases his father. Proverbs 12 verses 24 to 27 The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Heaviness in the heart of man mocketh it stoop, but a good word mocketh it glad. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. The slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. Imagine three neighbors, the neighbor on the right is righteous, the neighbor on the left is wicked, and one is dwelling between the two. Which of the two neighbors will have the greatest influence on the middle neighbor? According to verse 26, the way of the wicked man is more seductive. Conclusion, life or death. Proverbs 12 verse 28 In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. There are only two choices for the son and only two results at the end of each path, life or death. Summary The way of the righteous and the way of the wicked are clearly delineated in God's word. God's son will either love his instructions or he will reject them. A righteous son chooses to think, walk and speak in accordance with the wisdom and knowledge of God. The wicked son chooses to follow what he thinks is right in his own eyes. Each choice carries its own set of consequences. The son has free will to choose which path he will take, but he does not have control over the consequences. God will establish the righteous son, but he will condemn the wicked. Dispensational Consideration In every dispensation a choice has to be made. God has spoken and preserved his word in writing for the purpose of educating mankind in the right way. God's character never changes, but God does change in his dealings with men. God has not given the same instructions to men in every dispensation. A believer must rightly divide God's word to understand instructions that were spoken to him, and then he must choose to follow those instructions. In the current dispensation of grace, God has spoken through the Apostle Paul, and believers are to follow the instructions that Jesus Christ revealed to him. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 16, 11 verse 1, 14 verse 23, Philippians 3 verse 17. Those who have trusted in Jesus Christ's fully satisfying payment for their sin have obtained mercy from God, not because of any work they have done, but because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross.
Titus 3, verse 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit dwells in each believer, and he is building the corporate church, which is his body. This temple will never be overthrown, because Christ cannot fall. Ephesians 2, verse 22, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Life Application Although Proverbs is predominantly a book written to God's Son Israel, it has been preserved for all to read and from which to receive wisdom. The general principles taught in the book of Proverbs can still be applied to the believer today. It is always prudent to love God and choose to follow His instructions. By reading, studying, and believing God's Word, that believer will possess the treasure of God's counsel in his heart and be equipped with a renewed mind to walk pleasing to God. Romans 6 verse 17 But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Romans 12 colon 2 And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In each dispensation God has given mankind a work to do and a word to speak. A wise person will study God's word in order to know God's will, and then he will do it diligently. Proverbs 13 verse, For the soul of the sluggard desireth, and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. In chapter 13, the wise son hungers for the word of God and is satisfied. Proverbs chapter 12 homework. Concordance search. Find the word brutish and brute in the King James Bible. Study them in context to form a biblical definition. Compare the biblical definition with that of a Webster's 1828 dictionary and compare. The following verses are just two examples where love and choose are used together. I encourage you to see how often the word choose could be used in place of the word love as you read through the scriptures. This is also true for the words reject and hate. Deuteronomy 7 verse 7 The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people for ye were the fewest of all people. Psalm 78, But chose the tribe of Judah, the Mount Zion which he loved. John 15, 19, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Concordance search. A good man is found twelve times in the King James Bible. The first time it is used is 2 Samuel 18, verse 27 where it is associated with good tidings. When the Bible says, There is none that doeth good, as in Psalm 14, Psalm 53, and Romans 3, verse 12, it is referring to man's sin nature. By studying these twelve references to a good man, we can understand what type of character a good man possesses. Make a list of these characteristics in your notes. Concordance search. Search for the word virtuous in the King James Bible. Ruth is the only specific woman called virtuous in the Bible. This is especially interesting because she was a Moabite, a descendant of Lot, Abraham's nephew, and became part of the genealogy of Jesus, Matthew 1 verse 5. What do we know about Ruth that would characterize her as virtuous? She completely submitted herself to the God of no Naomi's people, Ruth 1 verse 16. The biblical definition of a virtuous woman is a wife who walks in the wisdom of God. We know from Proverbs 31 verse 10 and Job 28 verses 12 to 18 that such a woman did not exist in the land of the living at the time those books were written. Study the word virtue to learn more about this quality and consider that Jesus Christ and his word is the source of all virtue. All scripture points us to him. Consider the wife that mocketh ashamed is as rottenness in her husband's bones. Proverbs 12 verse 4. Adam said regarding Eve, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. Genesis 2 verse 23. I recommend a concordance search for bone and flesh, to understand that this phrase does not simply refer to literal bone and flesh, nor does it refer only to a husband and wife. It means my kindred or my brethren. This gives deeper meaning to this passage. 
Ephesians 5 verse 30, for we are members of his bone, of his flesh, and of his bones. If you have trusted in Christ's redeeming work on the cross as payment for your sins, you are a member of Jesus' body, you are of his flesh and of his bones. You are his kindred, and you are an heir of eternal life. Study the phrase causes shame is found in Proverbs four times. Shame is due to rejection of God's instruction as seen in the following verses. Note what causes shame in each of the verses. Proverbs 10 verse 5, Proverbs 13 verse 18, Proverbs 19 verse 26, Proverbs 28 verse 7, Proverbs 29 verse 15. Concordance search. Find the words counsel and heart as used together in a King James Bible. Study the context of each use to understand how they are linked together and how God will judge man based on what is in his heart. Notice the choice between the counsel of man and the counsel of God. It is important to fill our thoughts with the truth of God's word instead of man's wisdom. Concordance search. Find the word commend in a KJB. Read through these references to get a biblical definition of the word. Compare your definition to that of Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Consider the following verses describe the slothful son. Proverbs 6 verse 9, 20 verse 4, 21, 25. Read through these verses and record his characteristics in your notes. Read Deuteronomy 8 verse 3, Matthew 4 verse 4. Luke 4 verse 4 and John 6 verses 35 to 51 teaches that the word of God, scripture, and the word of God, Jesus Christ, is the bread of life. Overview in chapter 12, there are two types of men and women described by their actions or lack thereof. As you study through the book of Proverbs, consider making similar lists of contrasting traits in your notes. A good man versus a wicked man, a wise man versus a fool a righteous man versus the wicked, a working man versus a slothful man, a prudent man versus a fool, a diligent man versus the slothful, the just man versus the wicked, a right-speaking man versus a false witness, a virtuous woman versus she that mocketh ashamed.